Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are inside of Luminar Neo. Now, I have to remind you, I am using a beta version, but we're gonna take a look at color transfer and how this tool works. We're gonna unpack it a little bit, and I would love to answer any of your questions down in the comment section below. If you want to pick up Luminar Neo, and save a little bit of money consider using the coupon code at no extra cost to you i make a small commission and it helps support this channel so let's go ahead and dive into the content for today's lesson so luminar neo here we are and obviously there's a little bit of work that's been done to the image so far so this is the original and you can see i had some dust spots in there i also have some color challenges going on and this is why i want to use color transfer and then i did a little bit of work and got us to this point but what i want to do is kind of tie in color from some other images what you'll do and i'm just going to go ahead and minimize all of these other options okay so inside of the creative section the second one down is where color transfer is going to be located so i'm just going to go ahead and click on that and it brings up this dialog box now the very first step when using color transfer is you have to click on this reference selection and this is where you get to choose your images all right you can see i have a few images here I've imported three of my own images with looks and color schemes, if you will, that I have found uh, interesting and things that I've been trying on other photos. But for this image, what I want to do is get more like that camp nostalgia type of vibe. All right. So between the photo here and this reference photo here, I think one of those is going to work. So I'm going to go with the first one and see what happens. So you can see that it is loading over there on the icon. And then what what's going to happen once it's done loading down here as well, it's going to apply the colors based off of the settings, which we're going to go through here in a second. It's going to apply the colors to the photo. So we'll give that a second to render and then we'll come back once it's loaded. It does take some time for this to apply. Hopefully it gets faster once we get to the release version. Luminar applied the color from the image to my photo that we're working on. And I actually like what we got so far. Like, and I think the reason why I like it is because the settings have already been adjusted, but this wouldn't be a very good lesson if I didn't at least go through what these settings are doing to the overall image. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the first slider here is the amount. And think of this as your opacity slider or your intensity slider of the entire effect over your image. All right. So what I like to do is usually keep this really high if I really want to push the effect of the color or really low. I don't really keep it anywhere in the middle like how this is at 60%, but that's just in my testing. Usually I push this up to about 90 or a little bit over, or I have it down to about 30 or less. It depends on the image and how much I wanna push. And there, you'll see why here in a second when we start talking through some of these other sliders. So. When I push this really, really high, you can see that it just gets way more intense. The colors start to get a little bit more muddy here, um, but I like what it's doing overall. So the next slider down is color intensity. Now, color intensity is probably one of the more uh, subtle sliders. I mean, it has a huge impact. Uh, with it at 100%, the intensity of the colors being transferred into the image are going to really uh, like grab hold of the like areas, if you will, of your image. So if I pull this down, I'm just going to pull it down to 11. And what we're going to see is the colors are going to get a little bit less intense. And I, I hate to describe the thing with the word, but what you see is I'm getting back to the original color. Now, the opacity slider or the amount, if you will, is still applying this 
to the entire image and it's really trying to push it to every aspect of the image. But when you pull down on the color intensity, this is one of those things where you have to decide how much of the original color from the image do you want to apply to your photo. So I usually leave the color intensity up really high. So I think about 90 is probably appropriate for this particular image because I want to get rid of some of that green that was happening down here in the water and really turn it back to like this yellow brownish looking color because that's the style that I'm going for in this particular image. But your photos, you know, you'll have to play around with it for yourself to see how that works out for you. Then we have the luminosity intensity. Now, if you spent a lot of time building your contrast and your luminance the way that you want it before you bring the photo to color transfer, then you may want to actually pull the luminosity intensity down unless there's some sort of contrast that you really, really appreciate in the reference image. And you say, you know what, I really want to put that into my file. But if you already established the luminance or uh, the way that you want that contrast to really play out in your photo, then you're going to want to pull this down. Now, I haven't found a good sweet spot for this yet. I'm still testing it out. Um, unlike the amount and the color intensity, I find that either the amount goes all the way up or it comes pretty close to you know below 30, whatever. And then color intensity is usually all the way up. Uh, unless I know that I just don't want the colors, but then that kind of defeats the purpose of color transfer. So, uh, but with the luminosity intensity, this really does play a huge role. And I think it matters when you decide to put this into your editing workflow. So if you are putting this at the end of your editing stack, then I think that it's perfectly fine to lower the intensity. If you're putting this somewhere in the middle or towards the beginning of your editing stack, then you may want to actually put the luminosity intensity up a little bit higher because that's going to change, you know, the way that your overall edits look. So because I'm actually towards the end, but I guess I don't really have that much contrast coming through on the image. I'm going to actually push this luminosity uh, slider up a little bit more and let the darker areas in the background there get a little bit darker. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I think that this is looking good. It's like giving me that warm summer uh, or early fall look. But I'll say summer because we still got a whole lot of green in the trees back here. Okay. So now the next slider is transition smoothing. And this is one of those sliders I have found leaving it at 50% is probably the best. But if I pull this all the way down, we're going to look in the barn here because I think that we're going to see the most transition issues down here or over here, I should say. And essentially it's going to look like splotchy. Like this doesn't look very good. This could be the look that you're going for, but I highly doubt that anyone is going for a look that looks this unrefined. What I recommend doing is just pulling this up to 50% because that's where I have found it working the best. All right. You could go a little bit higher, but I'm not sure if you'll really be able to tell the difference or the colors will just start to bleed all over the place. And that just doesn't look too good. Um, or I imagine it wouldn't. I couldn't replicate that on too many of the images that I was testing this on. But on this image, I knew that that's what was going to happen, uh, w which is why I was pointing you to the barn or directing your attention to the I guess this isn't a barn, the building, we'll just call it that. So that's transition smoothing. I recommend just leaving that at 50. Play around with it. Let me know what you get when when this is released. Let me know uh, how things are working out for you in the comment section below. And then we have color smoothing. And color smoothing, I feel like I'm still trying to, to hone in on what exactly color smoothing does because it's easy to tell what the transition smoothing does, 
But with the color smoothing, I, I think what it's trying to do is give this gradient look between the darkest uh, tones in your image to the brightest tones in your image and then how it spreads the color across those tones. I think that's what's happening. But without seeing a map of what's really going on, it's been a little difficult to tell the difference of like using this or not using this. And again, I'm still experimenting and, and practicing with this. Uh, but essentially what I think is happening is it's just trying to spread the color across the image and the tonal range that's within the image. If anyone finds out what this particular slider is doing, then just drop it in the comment section below. I don't claim to be an expert at this tool, uh, but I did want to showcase that, you know, it's something. Now, I am not going to check this block that says match similar objects color because one, it takes very, very long in the beta version and hopefully it's faster in the full release. But I also haven't found that it does anything that I can significantly say, look, that's what that has done to the image. Even when I use a landscape image to a landscape image or a portrait to a portrait, it just doesn't seem to do much of anything that I can tell the difference. So I just don't check it and I leave it be. Okay. So one of the creative things that you can do inside of Luminar is mask the color transfer tool into particular areas of the image. So now that I have everything set, what I'm going to do is click on masking and then I'm going to click on linear gradient and I'm just going to click and drag down over the top portion here or bottom portion, I should say. And I'm just going to fade it into the water. All right. And everywhere that you see red, the effect is going to be applied. So that means color transfer is going to be applied at 100 percent right here and above this line all the way through the top of the image and then below this line up until the other solid line it's going to transition from 99 percent to zero percent of the effect being applied which means it's going to give me a good gradient over this water and i can stretch this out as far as i need to or pull it in and make it more abrupt but i'm just going to go right about there and then I'm going to click off of my mask. And as you can see, I now have the effect only over the top portion of the image. So if I were to turn this little eye off and on, you can see what's happening. It does take a little bit of time for the previews to pop up. Hopefully this gets faster with the full release of Luminar Neo. And so you can see that I now only have the effect over the top portion of the image and it's fading out through the water, giving me both the original colors that I had when I went into color transfer, as well as the colors that I transferred from the image. So hopefully you found some value in this particular content. If you did, smash the like button. Again, if you want to pick up Luminar Neo and save a little bit of money, consider using my affiliate code down in the description box below, or you can see it on screen now. If you got questions about it, let me know in the comment section below. And until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.